everyone, welcome to this month's altar redecorating. Sorry for the barking in the background, Echo is being a butt today and barking in the backyard, so I apologize for that, but uh, let's go ahead and get into it. I chose this altar cloth or altar paper this month because, uh, first of all, I haven't had time to go out and get a new one, but also because um, this was the only new one that I haven't used before. So I decided to use this, and it's a nice kind of spring color. It it looks more uh, like minty green, I think, on the camera than it is in person. It's a little bit more of a lime green, which I'm not really into lime green, but for some reason I liked this one. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start getting into the crystals we're going to put on this altar this month. One thing I do want to mention is that um, some people ask me, like, what do I use my altar for, and, you know, how, like, why do I keep doing this? One thing that I I mentioned to my friend that they were like, you need to mention that in your video because I think that's really important, is I actually use my altar to kind of ground my energies for and like prepare them to tackle the rest of the month. And that, especially as someone who suffers from um, disassociation a lot because I have PTSD or CPSD, CPTSD, ugh, so complicated. Um, I disassociate a lot so it's a really great way for me to ground my energies at the beginning of the month and kind of help me through whatever energies will come up during that month and so even though you know I don't always know what's gonna come up for me that month I kind of am able to prepare a little bit for it and my guides are helping me to prepare for it by helping me pick out the stones and stuff to put on the altar. So I just thought I would mention that in case you guys need a routine that would help you do that because some people do it once weekly, some people never change their altar, some people do it once monthly. So if you do find it hard to tackle energies or that you disassociate a lot, it might be really helpful to make a practice like this to where you're constantly, you know, renewing ways to help ground and center your energy every month or every week depending on how often you want to do it. To begin, I'm going to put the candle on the altar. I still haven't used up the one from last month, so I'm going to use that. And I'm pretty sure... I'm gonna put it in the middle, in the center, in the back this time. And then I also um, have programmed this quartz crystal point to just amplify any energies on this altar this month. So this one kind of gets changed out a lot um, as far as like programming goes, just because it's the main quartz and it works really good at like amplifying anything that I need amplified. And then I have some green fluorite, which my sister gave this to me for Christmas. So I'm going to use that. I felt called to use it. I'm not, I actually haven't looked up the properties for this um, recently, so I need to refresh myself on that and understand why it's on here. And then I also am going to be using some citrine, which is a, um, I'm using this as an abundance stone this month just because I need to gather up some abundance um, financially specifically uh, this month so I'm hoping this will help me and citrine is a really good money stone if you don't carry some in your purse or wallet or whatever already you probably should be because <laughs> it's really helpful in just attracting um, financial abundance to you and it's really good for treating um, depression and it's it's kind of called like the sunshine stone because it looks like sunshine in a stone and then another stone that I'm using this month is bloodstone which I actually felt called to use this again this month because I had it on my altar last month but I kind of just wanted to use it again this month I need to change these around because otherwise it's green and green and I can't do that <laughs> Um, and then another thing I'm going to use this month that I used last month is my little treasure chest, which I really like to use this when I'm attracting abundance, especially financial abundance, because it just reminds me to look for the hidden treasures every day and look for hidden opportunities. I'm going to put that right there. And then I'm also going to use this stone, which this one doesn't look special, but the energy with it is really 
really um, wonderful. My friend actually picked this out for me when we were hanging out together in Virginia City and, um, or maybe it wasn't Virginia City. I can't remember, but uh, they gave it to me and he gave it to me because it looks like a triangle and I am obsessed with triangles. And he was like, look, here's a triangle. And I was like, oh my God, I love it. So I wanna have those energies on my altar this month. So I'm gonna put that there. And then I'm also going to use um, a rainbow moonstone, which this was also a gift from my friend. Um, Rainbow Moonstone is one of my favorite moon, uh, moonstones to work with. I love moonstone in general, but Rainbow Moonstone in particular is just, I don't know what it is about it, but it's amazing. Um, so I'm going to put that there. And then I'm also going to use Labradorite. And even though I had Labradorite on the altar last month, this specific piece of Labradorite was given to me by my friend. And I, can you tell I'm missing my friend right now? <laughs> Um, they just left yesterday and I'm kind of like lonely and, you know, pouting in the corner. But besides that, um, I'm trying to bring their energy into the altar this month because I really do miss them. Um, so I'm going to put that here and then we're going to go into the cards for this month. And I know I don't have my selenite on here. I know that's weird, you guys, but I just, I don't know. I just don't really feel called to use selenite on my altar this month. So we're just going to roll with it. So I picked out four cards from the deck this month and the deck we're using is the Wisdom Keepers Oracle deck and Inner Guidebook by Rosie Aronson and this is a really good deck for like inner work. Um, I found that it can be kind of quite long for big readings but for inner work and especially like my altar cards I really find them helpful because it is just more in depth for just inner work stuff. So I picked four cards right away. This one is standing out to me, so I'm gonna pull that out. And then I'm gonna see if there's any more. Yeah, I'm not feeling any of these, so I'm just gonna put those aside. And this is gonna be our card for the month, which is interesting, anticipation. So I'm gonna go ahead and look in the guidebook and see what this says. Okay, so this card is talking about anticipating uh, change in your life because it's saying that a new world or life chapter is beckoning you and that every cell in your body is intricately linked just as every impulse within you is communicating to the whole of creation. And it's saying that um, you should listen carefully and, and it's saying that you hold the key to your dreams in your own hand and it's your responsibility to turn that key, which is interesting because I think a lot of us... You know, when we have things coming up in our lives, we feel like we need to keep pushing and pushing and pushing the universe to get it to us when really the universe is just kind of waiting for us to meet it halfway. So I think it's a great message this month. And each card in this deck comes with questions for contemplation that you can meditate on or think upon. And some of the ones associated with this card are where in your life do you feel too full or too empty and do you tend to go back and forth between the two and another one is do you fantasize a lot but have difficulty making things happen um, are you so driven to manifest your dreams that you burn out things like that which is this is a really good card because like with with my friend visiting for the last two weeks um, it's a good example I I wanted to get things done while they were here, but I was like pushing myself and pushing myself and waiting for the right moment to, you know, get everything done. And that moment never came, but I don't think it was supposed to. And sometimes we just have to give ourselves a break, even though we feel like we can't take a break or we shouldn't take a break. And I think it's really important to be connected to our inner selves and be connected to the universe and pick up on the little signs that the universe is giving to us of, yes, go this way, or this isn't the right path for you right now and things like that. Once you get more in touch with that and have that sense of anticipation for you know, the turns and, and things like that in your path, then it gets more exciting and your path gets more interesting and it allows you to grow as a person, um, with that anticipation in mind, because you're, you're preparing yourself for experiences that you'll experience, but letting go of things that you don't need anymore. So I think this is a really great card for this month. And, yeah, I think that's my altar for this month. I hope you guys like it. I, I'm really liking the energy right now. It feels very grounded and it just, I don't know. I, I really like the energy of this altar this month, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up 
and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos from me. If you have any video requests for future videos, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. I know that sometimes I don't get around to requests very soon or not at all, but it is really helpful for me to know what you guys want to see and what you would be interested in seeing so I can add them to my video list if I feel like that's a video that I want to make. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful week and I wish you the best April ever and I hope that this month, uh, this past month has treat treated you very well and I wish you all the abundance and happiness in the world and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Mm -hmm.